Hi, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the Finos virtual meetup. Um, I'm James McLeod, the Director of Community at Finos, and I'm joined by Ilya Gorlik, Vice President and Head of Real-Time Computing Lab at EPAM, and Alexi Davilu. You can put me right on that, Alexi, very soon. Um, he's the Chief Architect of Timebase at EPAM, and they're here to introduce us to, to Timebase Community Edition. But before we actually get into the presentation, I'd like to ask everybody who's joining us this afternoon to put any questions that you may have to the team in the WebEx chat. I'd also like to say that um, this afternoon we'll be giving away two free Finos t-shirts picked at random for people who have registered on Finos for this presentation and meetup. Um, so please go across to finos.org. Um, where you'll be able to register for this meetup if you haven't done so already. Um, and you can also subscribe to us on LinkedIn and also follow us on Twitter. And whilst you're at finos.org, remember to find our Get Involved page where that gives you a lot more information about how you as a contributor to Finos and part of the Finos community can get involved with our activities. And there you can also register for newsletters and events. Um, and also, if you are a developer or engineer, please go along to github.com forward slash Finos, where you'll find the Finos organization and all of our projects. And included in our organization is KDB Studio, who are currently looking for Java developers for all of their good first issues. So if you're after anything to do and you are a Java developer, please feel free to go over to KDB Studio. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Ilya. Hi, Ilya, how are you? It's over to you, thank you. Thank you, James, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. It's a privilege and honor for me to present. And today, in our presentation, we'll talk about Time Base, Community Edition. And with that, I'd like to share my PowerPoint slides. So agenda for next 20 minutes, plus minus, would be that we'll spend few minutes in the presentation, talking about overview and history of time base, and then we'll go to live demonstrations and we'll see a bunch of examples. So time base is a high performance time series database and streaming system, which is developed by Deltix, which is currently a um, division inside EPAM. And the streaming system, which is messaging middleware um, and um, database allows to both historical real-time analysis of data. And TimeBase is a result of 15 years of experience in financial domain. We run TimeBase standalone on the cluster. We process millions of events per second, and we store terabytes of data and can offer low microsecond latencies when traded in real time. The history of TimeBase will start from looking at motivation. What was the primary driver for creation of TimeBase? So original focus of Deltic software was to build technology for quantitative trading. So if you are quant and you want to build your quantitative model, then the workflow would be just depicted in this uh, diagram, right? Starts from aggregating and normalizing basically real-time market data or any other data. So it could be um, any sensor data, or it could be surveillance data or news fundamental data. Basically, data comes to research. And the first focus of um, our company was to build tools for backtesting. So original focus of Deltix was to build technology, which we call QuantOffice, which was using the market data for um, obviously building strategies, backtesting them, optimizing them. And as time evolved, then we start producing the solution for real time. And that's how TimeBase became a focal, most important element in our ecosystem, because this thing responsible for both real time and historical uh, data consumption and streaming to analytics. And so as a result, going back to history, we released the first version of TimeBase for mostly historical analysis, and then made the 2010 a big year where TimeBase started using for real time trading. In 2015, we released a system for large data sets. And basically, you can see the story on this chart. And 2020 is a big year for us because after 15 years of proprietary licensing uh, of technology to top tier hedge funds and brokers and banks, we decided uh, with the help of the PAM to make it open source. And so here we are. 
and we released timebase.info website, and you're more than welcome to go there and um, see what we have to say. So I already covered this slide, and now as time evolved, we spent more time defining different use cases and eventually built platform, which we today call Aggregate Analyze Act. So this is AAA or sort of a platform is based on time base ability to aggregate data and stream it for analytical layer and later for sort of actionable layer. Whether you build dashboards or whether you build uh, any monitors, this is the um, intrinsic feature of time base enable people to do it easily. So most important use case of time base are represented on this slide. So starting from generic time series data analysis. This is where we're pretty good. We also build specialized math libraries, which are part of sort of time based ecosystem and a lot of additional tools. But by design, <clears throat> system is being built in such a way that uh, Python, R, MATLAB, C Sharp, .NET, Java, all the languages would be um, accessible for research and um, algorithm backtesting is the second very important use case. Live streaming, algorithm trading uh, is important. Warm up mode is a special mode of time base which enables programmers and creators of strategies not to worry about initializing data if you need to say, for example, two or three days of historical data before you run your model live. So, warm up will take care of the accelerated playback of um, sort of time stream which you need for historical initialization of your indicators in background mode. And switching cursor to real time when basically buffer is initialized. Market data aggregation ticket plant, of course, is important use cases. And then real time event processing and long distance streaming are very valuable elements of the use cases. So if you want to broadcast your data live or sort of synthetic data, it's all possible through time based infrastructure. So I already mentioned some of key features. Let's just spend a few more minutes or seconds on this slide. So first of all, it's battle tested. More than 200 hedge funds and trading desks used it in um, sort of um, action. We think that uh, cost efficiency is second important uh, benefit of time base. We always designed it in such a way that um, small and medium sized funds could afford it. And the cost of calculations, cost of infrastructure, and cost of hardware, it's all taken into account. Timebase has a superior performance. We really process millions of events per second and afford um, low kind of stable microseconds in the community hardware. We would say complete ecosystem. What it means is you basically have ability to build all in one solution in a relatively short amount of time. So we focus on delivery results in tools like um, Carfana or Power BI and um, support custom connectors, you can write your own connectors. And as I said, designed for analytics, we support multiple language APIs. And the last feature is important, data modeling. When you work on business applications, you want to simulate or you want to approximate your business domain in the messages, which would be resembling your business logic. And so time base supports rich set of um, sort of data structures, including lists and arrays as kind of underlying messaging uh, elements. Uh, key technical features mostly available on the website, and I will um, not spend a lot of time on this particular slide, except that when I mentioned that again, REST of Circuit APIs and ability to custom your own, customize your own software is possible. This slide um, describes architecture and summarizes kind of um, generically what I just said, that um, on the left side, we see all the different data sources. You can see that we can have a custom market data connectors or Kafka, and uh, we support, for example, open source data feeds for fundamental data. And this data goes both in uh, real-time aggregation or historical, comes to polymorphic time series data store, and then gets streamed through the distribution bus to multiple consumers in the format of messages or API calls which are listener kind of um, handler based and enable native and very intuitive event programming. So typical style of programming, Alexa will share with you, but it's more like on some event, do something. That's the style 
of um, programming which enables both historical and real-time stream analysis very efficient. So last kind of slide, what makes TimeBase unique? Uh, we believe there's two main features. First of all, that it allows historical and real-time processing in the same APIs. So the same exact APIs could be used to build historical models or run them live. And it was a very important feature for the whole Teltex infrastructure because code would be written only once and would not be um, sort of abused uh, between backtesting and real-time production deployment. And second very important feature of TimeBase that it allows a structure of messages to be very uh, close to business logic of applications. So we provide polymorphic uh, stream-based um, description of a business logic, and it enables the um, convenient, I guess, not exactly no code, of course, development, but close to low code sort of programming paradigm. So that is the sort of time base uh, overview. And with that, I'd like to switch to live demos. So this slide starts from our protocol cross cortex, which visualizes this aggregate analyze infrastructure. And you can see aggregation of multiple pieces right in the center of ecosystem. There's time base. And we're going to jump to something called time base administrator, which is a tool which enables to um, uh, monitor and administer the um, time base servers. And if we go to the um, any stream, uh, which we you see on the left, I got a bunch of different streams, some of them cryptocurrency trading streams, some of them non-cryptocurrency, all these commands are available here. And if I go to stream schema analysis, then we'll see that um, we've got a sort of modeling of this particular stream. And if I go back to stream and I say, hey, I would like to look at the data, we'll see in real time, this is just a stream of messages which happen um, as we speak. And every message, if I just double click on it, will be represented on the right in the detail form. Or if I go to JSON view, uh, then basically we can switch between different representation. That's a JSON, uh, JSON view on this particular stream. So all the data here described. There's another very useful uh, feature in the time base called inspector which enables basically uh, look at messages as they go in historical timestamp format. This is basically analysis of each individual data. And again, if I double click, then we'll see again all the messages and some of them, like in this case, vendor snapshot. In some cases, it is a, um, a raw update delete insert message. So let's say, for example, go to Bitfinex and we go to um, this stream uh, we will see that messages now coming to us will be format of incremental update, which is basically a different type of style of a message. And custom components was developed allowing, for example, to visualize all these pieces. This is not necessarily a community edition uh, feature, but it is a um, also ability to program within time-based administrator your own custom widgets and enable to visualize data within this system. Next example of a video of a demo, I'd like to show you the what we call portfolio risk monitor. So what we see here, this is the um, uh, example where in fact, experiment configurator, we have um, several million of individual instruments. And let's say I want to create 10,000 synthetic portfolios where I'm just simulating. And I click on command start <clears throat> and we'll see the burst of a message processing. Uh, and we go to front end. And we'll see immediately how this universe is changed. And now we see in real time every portfolio, how it basically based upon volatility or value, we display them in this heat map. And so if I jump to, let's say, this particular um, component, we see all individual elements of this portfolio. In this case, the stocks and bonds. And we look at uh, their risk contribution and all different components, which visualization model allowed us to create. So that's a good example where we see the live uh, streaming of data, aggregation, and visualization, and it's all basically could be done in a matter of, um, say, days or even hours. 
Next example is where we're using TimeBase for, let's say, instant payment service uh, visualization. So all the different payments, individual kind of transactions, are presented again as a stream on the left. Every time I um, say, for example, if I close this, this is basically structure of messages, we see the origins of these messages. And if I double click, we're going through the same TimeBase administrator-like style, looking at an individual message. And this is the uh, telemetry dashboard which is programmed, again, using open source tools. And in this example, they illustrate what happened last minute, or last five minutes, or last hour, and so on and so forth. We basically look at all different transactions and um, see the dashboards. Uh, Timebase also integrate directly to Grafana. So Alexia will show us later how it can be done. This is going to show you the result of some dashboard, exactly the same dashboard, where we just look at instant payment distributions and monitoring. One more example I would like to show you integration of TimeBase with Jupyter Notebook, where in this example we look at skewness of order book and the source code and the calls to basically TimeBase API, which is basically defined subscriptions, and we run different models where we basically start from looking at market order book and again using standard Jupyter Notebook visualization tools for in this case to look at uh, order book that is basically time and the volume and the prices. So we look at structure of the book and this kind of a 3D container. And the last example which I'd like to show you is an example of our technology which is called QuantHub. This is the um, also application developed on top of TimeBase using the open source, in this case, um, Java visualization, JavaScript visualization tools and different components uh, right here would be available. For example, if I go to this component, which we call a box chart, and the, hmm, give me one second, my apologies. I go to box chart, and uh, all the different um, elements of the, this case, equities would be represented. The source code of this component right here in front of us. So this is JavaScript code. This is the result of this JavaScript code, and we're basically making the request to time base right in these uh, lines, and all additional visualization elements would could be, uh, for example, charting, visualization components where we look at price charts, or it could be Voronoi diagrams where we look at different elements, or it could be very cool um, I know, bar charts, or uh, let's say in this case, a switch to larger sec sequence of data, or different scatter plots. It's all part of the visualization um, elements which connect to the time base. Well, with that, I um, would like to pass the um, um, sort of presentation mode to Alexi. And Alexi will show us some live program examples. Alexi, here is your uh, screen. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Alexi and I'm very pleased to present to you today. And I would like to just add you uh, technical uh, details of what you can do with time base. How can one actually start working with it? Like imagine you have uh, the necessity to transfer the uh, market data from one uh, piece of uh, software to another and uh, persistently store it basically in a very reliable way. Uh, for this purpose, we create uh, this little uh, time base, what we call stream, which uh, similar to, let's say, Kafka uh, name, Kafka topic. Here it is, with uh, just one uh, key uh, of instrument here. We can uh, go to view and see in a big, big table, uh, every single data point that we have in this uh, topic, in this uh, time-based uh, admin uh, UI, which uh, is part of community edition. And I would like to factor the tool that uh, Ilya just shown to you to show you that there is no data coming here. And today I would like uh, the source code examples uh, for Jupyter Hub uh, for the Python just to showcase how one can easily uh, connect 
to time base and despite the fact that it's a tool which is uh, designed to run in millions of events per second for a uh, very um, technically comprehensive applications, uh, you can easily start working with it. Just like that, you pass the link to the time base port, open up it, uh, name the stream you would like to open for writing and create the synthetic uh, data loader. And here in this little code with this infinite loop, I'm creating the synthetic market data to load it into the stream, just like that. I create the object and send it to the time base loader. Let me start it for you. It says that it's connected and start loading data. Let's switch back to this uh, inspector and see how data start coming in the real time uh, into my stream. And then I would like to show you one more example where I would like to use uh, the open source well-known library called Bokeh to show you how you can consume data in real time in Python. Uh, here I type the same stream name and uh, open up the same time base, create what we call cursor. This is an object that allows you to consume data in real time or in historical. It all depends on what start time, start time are you using. And I simply consume the messages here and pass it to the uh, my visualization. So let me run it for you. And you're now seeing how the data is coming in real time to this bokeh visualization. And exactly the same data I can show in a Grafana dashboard. Um, we create the special Grafana plugin for the time base. This is not uh, Prometheus or any other integration. We can connect directly to time base here, uh, let me switch to five minutes, type exactly same name of the stream, select uh, whatever data field I would like to show, let's say it price, and now you can see how data came in, in real time uh, from the time base. That's basically it. You can use a whole bunch of open source tools with time base and the APIs are available on all popular languages. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Alexey. So what I'll do now, I will go back to the um, uh, beginning of the session and we will um, have a question answer sort of session. James, it's back to you. Hi, thank you very much, Ilya. Um, okay, so before we actually um, go over to questions, um, I'd like to announce the winners um, of our Finos t-shirts for this afternoon. Um, so the first winner of a Finos t-shirt is um, Betsy Cameron um, from Global Relay Communications. Um, we'll be in contact with you, Betsy, to get your address details to ship you a free Finos t-shirt. And the second is George Sands from IBM. Thank you very much, both of you, for being here. Um, so there is one um, question that I'd like to ask, and I'd like to remind people, if you have any questions um, for Ilya or Alexei, please do put them in um, the WebEx chat and I'll uh, relay them for you. Um, but okay, so during your um, presentation, you actually, um, you know, said about uh, time-based community edition. I was actually wondering if there are any kind of systems or connection limitations 
um, between community edition, you know, versus a potential enterprise edition. It'll be good to to know what those differences are and, you know, whether there are any differences in the product itself. Well, let me answer this question. So the enterprise edition different from community edition only in one area where the whole set of um, market data connectors are, which we developed um, as Deltix over 15 years with a particular data structure, with a particular uh, connectivity is not included in community edition because it's um, sort of for two reasons. First of all, we don't want to impose any particular way of doing things on the market. And second, um, that um, basically um, we need to support it and we need to be fixed bugs and provide a lot of um, hands-on sort of um, hand-holding. Otherwise, from infrastructure perspective, from computer science perspective, it's the identical software. So if somebody knows how to develop market data connector and are willing to support and maintain it themselves, then of course, this is a perfect tool for community edition with a perfect system for this type of task. Hope I answered the question. Okay, thank you. Um, and we do have a second question. Um, what are examples of other open source components typically used with time-based community edition? Um, I can answer from my side and then Alexia maybe add to this one. So today, uh, it's mostly visualization libraries and the Kafka sort of streaming connector. But Alexia, maybe you can comment on this um, additionally. Right. Uh, apart from the Kafka and visualization libraries, uh, we have uh, the new initiative of building connectors uh, to other popular um, databases uh, which match our um, identity in uh, willing to process uh, big amount of messages per second uh, we are and dealing with the time series data we are now about to release an open source as well the connector to uh, database called clickhouse and a special postgre extension called time scale database plus the Grafana tool we shown today and uh, more to come. Thanks. That's great. Okay, I, do, I also have another question that's come in. So who is your target audience? So what type of user are you actually targeting you know, for Timebase as a project when it's open sourced? Yes, the target audience of our users are pretty much anybody who wants to work with time series data. I mean, within Finos, of course, it's uh, mostly by when we talk about time series data, we're mostly talking about market data and order sort of data, right? Where you send your orders, and for that, there's a special software for fixed processing, which we can stay away from this conversation. But for market data analysis, uh, to build um, any kind of um, skewness or any type of uh, execution algor uh, validation. So audience in the case of, in the world of finals, is anybody who is quantitatively driven uh, researcher. Outside of finals, of course, there are more time series um, analysis where maybe it will be relevant. Internet of Things use cases, monitoring, uh, all different uh, payment systems and anything which has to do with time series data, anything which has to do with events, traffic controllers, uh, pulse, healthcare, everything uh, along these lines would be the audience for uh, time base. That's great. And um, does time base do central data processing or is it more aligned with a streaming paradigm? Alexi, do you want to answer this question? Because I have my opinion, but... Uh... It's more aligned to streaming paradigm. We are adding more uh, things uh, to um, add some uh, centralized processing. And, uh, but basically we are focusing to integrating this other system to uh, add this feature. But I want to add one more case where we kind of, um spend significant amount of time utilizing high performance computing model where we stream data from central location to multiple nodes and each node then will be equipped with own sort of analytical layer in which case the um, 
uh, distribution of con calculational tasks can be massively uh, sort of parallelized. And that's where the um, sort of streaming versus central node processing is becoming uh, less kind of uh, clear. And the age computing term, which is used today quite frequently, that time base is ideal tool for that because the synchronization between central master database and the edge nodes uh, done through the same API, which we use for um, sort of analytical uh, data processing. So the same streaming, the same million event per second messaging is used to distribute data to nodes for edge computing and back from edge computing node back to center. That's great. And we've got time for one more question, um, which is what is the precision of the timestamps? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, actually, we have a use case where nanosecond timestamps were kind of deployed. It's an epoch, basically, integer. But by default, a system without any additional uh, stuff is a milliseconds and uh, microseconds are um, second very popular use case. But as I said, the nanosecond timestamps were also used in uh, one big deployment. Uh, I would like to add a little bit the nanosecond uh time resolution is very popular with our system right now. So you can easily use the nanosecond resolution with a time base. And uh, one more additional fact for someone who is interested, we also support the decimals uh, price formatting, uh, which is floating point, decimal floating point for uh, in the Intel-based uh, implementation, which is very important when you deal with the cryptocurrencies and other instruments with very precise uh, prices. It's actually a wonderful comment. Thanks, Alexei. Um, so thank you both very much um, for being with us this afternoon. So I'd like to say thank you to Ilya and Alexei from the EPAM Timebase team for their introduction to Timebase Community Edition. Um, I'd also like to remind people on the call that if um, you are an engineer or a developer, please feel free to go over to github.com forward slash uh, Finos to see all of our projects and get involved and start contributing. Um, and I'd like to remind you that our KDB team um, are actually looking for Java developers for KDB Studio. So if you are heading over to github.com uh, forward slash Finos, please do drop into KDB Studio. You will find a few issues where you can get started working on KDB Studio as well. So thank you very much, Ilya and Alexei, for being with us this afternoon. Um, all the best. Thank you. That was a great, great presentation. Thank you. I really enjoyed it.